Uh, happy September 28th. That makes us 12 days from move in at the Kentucky Horse Park. Uh, you guys probably, hopefully, know us by now, but I'm Kirsten Green. I'm the executive director with Raina Rasmus, who is our secretary and program assistant. Um, so the purpose of tonight's webinar is primarily to review uh, much of the content that you got in this bad boy um, last week. Uh, I think that generated some questions for people. It typically does. It's a lot of information to absorb. So we're here to review that with you and answer any questions that come up. Um, so I'm just going to like off the break cover a few things like that I know everybody's waiting to hear and things that have needed clarification over the past week or so, and then we'll kind of roll through things in detail. Um, so as far as contacting RRP, our staff, um, our last kind of full day at our desk is next Thursday. So after that, we're packing up, we're not, and we're shipping out of here on Saturday. So we're gonna be spending the rest of the day Friday, getting all of our stuff packed up to get out of here. And then we'll be on the road and then we'll be at the horse park. So once we hit that point, our response time are gonna be delayed. Um, so it's extremely helpful if you have anything that's been on your mind that you need clarification to that's not answered this evening, get that off your chest as soon as possible so that we can help you in a timely manner. Um, at that point, um, we will be monitoring, monitoring the voicemail in the office. You can reach Raina directly um, on the phone numbers that are in here. Um, but as always, please do not message us on Facebook. Uh, we use our Facebook for personal reasons, and it is not an efficient way for us to handle communication for work-related stuff. Um, and also, increasingly, um, we will do our best to keep tabs on the Facebook groups. But again, we're all there working the event. So um, please try to direct your questions, concerns, issues to Raina and not utilize the group. because. What we see increasingly in the group is people come there for questions that have either been answered someplace or have not yet been um, declared by our office. So like there are things that could have been one way a previous year and they're not going to be that way this year. And so we like if you haven't seen an announcement from us about it, like sit tight, it's coming kind of thing. Um, so just. That's just some housekeeping about contacting us over the next, uh, you know, twelve-ish days or so, plus the event. Um, everybody wants to know when ride times and stall assignments are going to be out. It's tomorrow. Yep. Raina has been working until her eyeballs fall out. Um, it is true. So tomorrow there will be an email. Um, there is also going to be additional, like discipline specific information coming out as well. So there will be another monster email um, that you will want to keep handy and refer to. Um, the other big thing is that check-in does not open until noon and our barns do not open until noon on Monday. You cannot get into your barns earlier. There is a huge hunter jumper show moving out uh, from the weekend prior and the horse park cannot guarantee that your stalls will be ready until noon. So please do not show up. We will not be ready to receive you. Um, anything on that? Well, I mean, I guess that can segue into check-in information. Yeah. So um, for check-in, you're going to want to have your horse's health paperwork uploaded beforehand. That is the Coggins Health Cert and EHP1 vaccination. If I pull up your horse's profile at check-in and I see that those files are not uploaded, I'm going to send you to the back of the line, tell you to log into the portal and upload them then. Until those are uploaded, I will not check you in. Uh, and similarly with the microchips, um, a lot of you still have not submitted a microchip number to us at all. Um, if you have not done that and you know your horse's microchip number and you know that that number is registered with the jockey club, you need to log into the portal and um, upload that now as well. So both of these can be found. If you go into the portal, you'll scroll down to the My Entry section. Um, and right next to your horse's name, there's a drop down menu in the Actions column. To upload the health paperwork, you're going to hit the Upload slash View Documents. To upload the microchip number, you're going to hit the Upload Registration Numbers uh, selection. 
And same thing with the microchip, we're not going to let you through check-in if your horse does not have a microchip with us that is registered with the jockey club. If you have at least had it submitted with us, we will then check to make sure it's registered with the jockey club. If it's not, uh, we're probably going to send you with a microchip reader to try to find another one that is. Um, and if you can't, we're going to get you to try to register that one with the jockey club. So it's really going to hold you up in checking. You're not going to be able to get your arrival exam done. You're not going to be able to like start moving around the park until all your health paperwork is in and your microchips are done. So if you still haven't gotten your horse scanned for a microchip and you still haven't checked to see um, if that microchip is registered with the Jockey Club, do it now. Uh, you can email us if you have any questions about that. If you can't get your horse out to a vet to see if they have a microchip, you can very easily order a microchip scanner off of Amazon uh, and you can do it yourself. They're not, they're not very pricey. Um, and let's see. So and on the subject of microchips and health documentation in general, um, this is not optional stuff and it's not new information. These are not new rules. And we have done more than our fair share to remind you guys of these deadlines and requirements. So please do not be the person that has to get sent home over something that was completely in your control to take care of. We have gone out of our way to remind you about these things and it's not optional. Um, even if your horse has a tattoo, we are still expecting that you have a microchip inserted and that it's registered with the jockey club. Um, and we have had all year to take care of this and there's really no excuse. So please do not be the person that gets sent home because they didn't have a microchip. Please do not be the person that gets sent home because they don't have appropriate documentation of a vaccine, of a EHV1 vaccine within the required time period. If you are moving into the horse park on the 10th, you needed to have your booster prior to the 26th, and you need to have appropriate documentation of that. A receipt is not like from tractor supply. I'm not calling anybody out, but specifically, we don't accept that documentation. You need something that's certified by your vet, whether it's signed on your health certificate, a receipt from the vet with the horse's name and date of vaccination, or a letter on letterhead from your vet certifying. Like, and that is very clearly spelled out in our rule book as well. And we have sent people home for it before. So it's not a joke, like disease prevention is a real thing. We've just experienced a pandemic. I'm sorry, we're just, we're not playing with it. So yeah, I, I think within that too, it's easy. We're always super focused on EHV1. It's kind of easy to forget about the health certificate requirement too. Um, if you're traveling out of state, you need that within 30 days of arriving to the horse park. So if you haven't gotten that yet, you still have time. It just it pretty much needs to be done before you load up your horse on the trailer to come to Kentucky. Um, and that is another place you could have the uh, EHV1 vaccine listed. Um, and you'll need a Coggins too, and that's just within 12 months. Yeah. So that one's pretty easy, and I would hope all of you already have that. So. Don't forget about either of those. Um, and then um, just a couple of other like top end, if you're not going to stick with us to the end uh, tonight, this will be recorded. But um, there's also appears to be some confusion about um, the awards dinner. There is an awards dinner. We, before the pandemic, we had a party on Friday night or like after the finale or something every year. And we took a break from that last year, but party's back. So, and we're doing it as an awards dinner. So that is gonna be Friday night. We're gonna be doing awards presentations for um, preliminary results in all of the disciplines, the top place, juniors, amateurs, and teams, all the special awards, all of that stuff's gonna get presented at this awards dinner on Friday. And that ticket is not included in your packet. It is not included in your entry. You do need to purchase a ticket and you need to do it by October 13th. That's, that's how you go to the awards party. Um, and it is a dinner. So that means that with your purchase of your ticket, you do get dinner and you do get one drink ticket after that it's cash bar. All right. Um, and then the last thing is that if you, for whatever reason, will not be on site at the horse park by 5 PM on Tuesday, you need to tell Raina. Like yeah. ideally now, like if something happens, that's fine. You need to tell her as soon as you can. But if you know now that you're not going to be there, you need to let her know because we need to make sure that we make an arrangement for you to get your arrival exam done. 
you cannot compete without having passed the arrival exam. Yeah. And with that, we've gotten some questions about if you're shipping in, um, it's pretty easy. Same thing, you're still gonna wanna check in either either afternoon on Monday or anytime between eight and five on Tuesday. If you're shipping in, bring your horse with you. Um, and basically, as soon as you check in, you're going to take your horse and you're going to walk down to the barns one through four area. You, you might have to pull wait. in like you when you're shipping in and pulling in with your horse, like you can pull into barns one through four, leave them there in the trailer, walk across the street, check in, and then they will do your arrival exam like from the trailer there in barns one through four. So yeah. that's going to be the protocol for yeah. the shipping people. So, so there, yeah. no, you're fine. So like there is an online queue for everyone, but if you are a ship in, you're just going after you check in, um, you're going straight to barns one through four and you can bring your trailer there first, but you physically need to walk up to check in, check in, then go to barns one through four and get your arrival exam done. You might have to wait a couple minutes if the vets there are doing the lameness portion of the exam for a couple other horses. Um, but it, it won't be long. So you'll just head straight there. Uh, and that's the other part I forgot to mention about check-in. Do not come to check-in until your horse is on the grounds of the horse park and ready for their arrival exam. Um, that's another thing we will ask you at check-in, is your horse ready? Because you're going to be placed on that queue immediately and the vets are estimating that it's only going to be about 30 minutes from when you check in to when they're going to meet you at the stall to perform the first half of your arrival exam. So if your horse is not on the grounds, we're not going to check you in. Yeah. Um, and we'll that cover this a little bit too, because we've changed the protocol some. Some mm -hmm. of you guys that have done this before, um, we've kind of like tweaked the, and re-engineered the arrival exam a little bit each year to try to make it more efficient. Um, and what we're doing this year is that it, it did not work out. We had a lot of that standing around wasting time, like going scheduled barn by barn. So we're doing kind of like a, you know, kind of like when you go to a restaurant and you and they're on a wait, like you go and you ask for your table and then they buzz you when it's your time. There's going to be a queue for you guys that to view where like what order you are and they're going to come find you at your stall based on like you are checked in and ready. Your paperwork and everything is in order. Your horse is there. You're ready to start your exam. So we'll cover that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that further. But I think that's all the initial housekeeping yeah um so we'll just break periodically to have a look at questions um if you're on zoom put them in the um q a section if you're on facebook just drop them in the comments and we'll have a look mm -hmm. um if your ehv1 is listed on, on your health shirt cert should we upload that document in both health certificate and proof of vaccination that would be yes, great that would yeah be super helpful uh do you also need a bill of sale if your horse is not for sale, no. The bill of sale section in the portal is not for how you acquired your makeover horse. That's if you sell your makeover horse, once you report the sale, that's where you upload the horse's bill of sale. But you are not required to have a bill of sale to prove ownership of your makeover horse. Yeah. Okay, um, so we're just gonna kind of have a look here. We've talked about, um, just to touch about ride times and stall assignments, if you you are welcome to ask Raina very nicely if she'll change your ride times or stall assignments based on something that you you know hopefully a very valid reason um but she's spent a lot of time doing the ride times and doing the stall assignments and trying to be trying to be as accommodating as possible and trying to give people as much time as possible that have multiple horses um so if you ask for a change at this point, it will be subject to a change fee if we can accommodate it. Mm -hmm. um, so think hard on that. <laughs> um, all right, arriving at the horse park. So um, like we said, you cannot arrive prior to noon on Monday um, and you'll come into the horse park and come like down through the traffic circle, down Cigar Lane, and then up Nina Bonnie Boulevard. There's a little map in the email that we sent showing you where to go. Um, the horse park will get you at some point or another for parking. It's $15 for the duration of the week. Um, sometimes if you're coming or going early or late, there might not be somebody in the guard shack, but expect that they'll catch you at some point for parking. Um, when you come through the traffic circle, if um, and you're headed down Cigar Lane. 
on the right hand side, there is a state vet, like state ag vet trailer. Um, if there is somebody there, just be prepared. They may stop you to look at your paperwork. And that's a separate process from anything that we do. I don't know. I can't say if it's going to be staffed and open or not, but just be aware that that is a spot that you might get flagged down for paperwork. Um, and then, so once, once you get there, you can pull up next to your stall quickly as possible, unload all of your stuff, dump everything out, drop your trailer and trailer parking, which is down past all tech, and then come back and start getting yourself set up. The barns can get kind of congested sometimes like at peak move-in hours. So it's very, please be courteous to your fellow competitors and pull off to one side, try to maintain drive aisle passage way and be quick about unloading your stuff and getting out of there with your trailer. Um, and then on that, the like drop trailer parking is a biblical march from barns. Like it is quite literally at, at least half a mile, if not more, from your stabling. So you can store stuff in there overnight, but you'll probably like you'll want a golf cart or a car or something to buzz down there and you can come in each day and drop stuff off and move stuff around. But um just plan accordingly. Also, if you have a tax stall, I would encourage you to bring a bike lock or something to lock your tax stall and don't leave your valuable tax stuff in there overnight. Um, let's see, state that blah, blah, blah. Um, for those of you that haven't been there before, um, your like the leading number in your stall assignment is the barn number that you're in. So if you're in stall like 702, you're in barn stall or you're in barn seven stall two. If you're in barn, if you're, 1047, you're in barn 10, stall 47. When you get there, we will put like little provisional index cards that say like whose stall this is. If there is a problem with your stall, do not put your horse in somebody else's stall. We've had problems with in the past with people showing up and putting their horses in the wrong stall. And then the person that is supposed to be in that stall gets there, it doesn't know where to go, blah, blah, blah. If you have a problem and you cannot safely put your horse in your stall, call Raina right away and we'll get, you know, Kentucky Horse Park maintenance or whatever to fix the problem or find you a different stall. Um, let's see, uh, there will be a competitor briefing. It's strongly encouraged that you guys attend that. It's gonna be at 6 p.m. in the covered arena. Um, really don't wanna miss that. All of the schooling and everything is closed so that you guys can come over there. So do not miss that. Um, the rider check-in procedure, we've touched on that a little bit. Um, again, updating that protocol so that we do not want to see people checking in until all of their paperwork is in order and uploaded and that their horse is on site and ready to be examined. So that's how the protocol is going to go. And then once you have all that stuff ready to go, we'll check you in, put you in the queue, and then a vet will come to your stall to start your exam. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are checking in for tip, um, we will have packets for the barrel horses only. They will have their show office and everything open in the covered arena on Tuesday. So if you have horses that are cross-entered or traveling with you, their check-in is going to be open in the covered arena on Tuesday, unless you are a barrel horse, and then we will have all of your stuff when you check in. Um, let's see. Uh, there, sorry, I guess for those of you checking in who um, indicated on your horse's entry that you wanted a dressage saddle pad, yep. we may or may not be short some. Um, we don't really know. Supply chain. Yep. If, we will get them to you. Yeah, <laughs> if that is the case, we will absolutely ship one to you. Um, so just a warning. Um, also, if you're in freestyle, that email included the link to upload your freestyle music. Please do that now. That's due by 5 p.m. Tuesday, the 11th. Um, you will also sign up for freestyle prop schooling at check-in. So if you're going to need prop schooling time, make sure you get that done. Uh, and you'll sign up for the stall decorating contest as well. Um, 
think those that's... sign up forms are available now, but obviously you can't sign up for stall decorating contests without knowing what your stalls are. So we'll link that again in the email when that stuff goes out. Um, the other thing is that we're really limiting the amount of print material that we put out. So if we're not planning on printing course maps. We'll post that to the competitor portal. There's a section that says um, competition patterns and course maps, and we will be posting things there as they become available. <laughs> Um, we're kind of lumping arrival exam and check in a little bit, but it looks like we've kind of covered before we get there too. I guess we can take another break. It looks like we have a couple questions that have come yeah. in. Um, so I have from Sierra, if my horse isn't able to sit on the trailer at a stop for too long or parked, how can I go about check in? I don't want him to hurt himself in the waiting. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we do have some stalls in barns one through four for that they will probably be open yeah so you'll want to talk to the vets there and make sure but there will be some stalls in barns one through four that are kind of for this purpose um and as long as you talk to them make sure it's okay you can put your horse in those stalls um but i mean i would also suggest bringing an extra person with you so someone can hang out with the horse while one of you goes up to check in uh, and then i have uh from christina what time do we have to be out of our stalls on sunday 8 a.m 8 a.m. on Sunday, you have to move out. Uh, I have two horses in field hunters. How does that work? So field hunters is split up into two groups, uh, but they are it's they are only 20 minutes apart. So you're definitely going to want an extra set of hands, someone to hold the one horse uh, while you're riding the other one. But we do have you in the two separate groups. Um, I have. Is there a schooling arena aside from ride times? Absolutely, there are tons of warm up arenas open check the link that's in this email that we're reviewing it's also posted to the competitor portal there's a very detailed schooling schedule about what rings are available when we do have ticketed schooling on we're going to cover that yeah <laughs> um should i do some questions yeah i have a couple more but you go through those first um leslie is there a way to see the documents to make sure that they're uploaded yes you can view the documents mm -hmm. that are already uploaded in the competitor portal yeah if, i believe if you scroll down to the bottom of the page they should be there um if you're not seeing them like you can go ahead and upload them again i believe you might only be able to see the most recent one rather than every single one so you can upload them again that's not going to hurt just make sure you upload the Coggins in the Coggins section, health certificate and health certificate section, and so on and so forth. Um, but just scroll down to the bottom of the page and you will be able to see what is uploaded in those spots. Um, parking, I'm pretty sure that they do take credit card. Trailer parking is not patrolled and it is very remote and out of the line of sight. So you want to make sure that your trailer is secure. Um, Cindy, uh, we do not, we do need to get all of your paperwork into the system somehow. If you need some assistance with that, we will be happy to help you. But what, what happens is that when you check in, we upload all of that stuff, like, because the vets need it on hand and they're going around with iPads. So they need to be able to see that stuff when they come to your stall. So ultimately it does need to get on file with us. Um, if you need help, please let us know. And when we say we're going to kick you to the back of the line, if your stuff isn't uploaded, like we will help you if you need help, yeah, but yeah. we're going to pull you out and, and help you get that sorted out and mm -hmm. then um, move on to the yeah. next person. I mean, at the, you know, if, Sydney, if you have the documents and you can email them to me, do that and I can probably upload them for you. Yeah, okay. um, if not, if you have them printed and you really can't get them uploaded, the best thing to do would be to um, definitely have them printed out and we can basically take a picture and upload it straight that way. Um, Paula, you asked uh, when the competitor briefing is. It's at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, right before the start of the competition. Um, I don't remember seeing anything about selecting a saddle pad on the entry. Am I still able to go view that? That was on your rider application at yeah. the beginning of the year because we had to order them many months ago. Mm -hmm. You can always email me if you're curious as to which one you selected, um, but at this point we can't really change that. Yeah. You can always, like, once we have checked everybody in and later in the week, if you would like to come and if you were down to get a dressage pad and we ran out, you're welcome to check back with us and see if we used up like all of our all-purpose saddle pads and we are happy to swap you that way. Um, 
or like if you just want to change styles like you're welcome to see like if we have anything left once we've checked everybody in mm -hmm. we might be okay we might be short a couple it's not this isn't going to impact like a massive number of people but and it might not impact anybody at all but we're just telling you guys ahead yeah. of time and we will make sure that everybody ultimately gets their completion so bad. where do i find info on submitting freestyle music uh that would be in the newsletter that went out last friday um do we have that added to the portal i believe it is in the portal as well yeah um possibly under trainer resources if you didn't get the newsletter that went out last Friday, email me. I'm happy to forward it to you. Um, yeah, that should be in the portal as well. But it is linked in the email that went out last Friday. It is in the uh, section labeled Rider Check In. All right. Um, we've kind of like mushed together arrival exam and schooling a little bit. So, um, we sent out a schooling schedule that is linked in the competitor portal. It's in the email that you guys got last week. Um, there will be a copy of it along with the venue map inside of your packet when you pick it up. That specifically says what type of riding and schooling is going to be available and what rings on what dates. And if there is, and if it's not listed there, that means it's not available to you. There are some rings that we don't use in the horse park, not many. But that means if it's not on there, like we don't use the walnut ring, so don't go in the walnut ring. That's it's that simple. Um, we do lock arenas for the competition venues when they are not open. So um, we've had people jump into arenas before. Um, so if you are found in violation of that schooling schedule or you're uncooperative with the schooling attendance, we will remove you from the competition. Mm -hmm. um, so please don't play on that. It's just really frustrating and it's unfair to everybody. So the way that this works, um, schooling, when you come in Monday, we'll have limited number of schooling rings, warm up rings open. You can hack the horse park to your heart's content. Um, there will be some arenas that you can get into. We're gonna be course building in most of the competition venues. So there won't be any of that available on Tuesday. Um, Monday. Oh, Monday. Monday, sorry. Um, Tuesday is ticketed schooling day. So in your competitor packet, you get two tickets and you can use those in the competition venue of your choice. So um, that is designed to make sure that you get an opportunity to get into at least two of the competition venues that you're going to be in, depending on what you're entered. So that means you will be able to school over fences on the hunter course, the jumper course, the eventing, the eventing show jumping course will all be open for over fences schooling. Mm -hmm. um, they are not set at a particular height at a particular time because the majority of you are doing the two six option. So there's no point in having a particular um, schedule per height. Uh, what we do is we have a schooling attendant at each in gate and they are tasked with making sure that the arenas don't get too full. So you'll come down and say you'd like to school. If it's not overcrowded, they'll take your ticket and let you in. Um, if it is overcrowded, they might tell you to wait 10 to 15 minutes and come back in a few. Um, this is not meant to be extensive schooling time. You know, it's 15, 20 minutes tops. Uh, we have a lot of horses that need to get through these arenas. So we want to make sure that everybody has a fair opportunity to do that. Through arena familiarization. Yes. There's plenty of schooling ranks for you to school. So warm up your horse, then go into the ring, do some arena familiarization, get buddies, give somebody else a chance. Yeah. Um, and then otherwise, again, this warm up arenas are generally available at any time. Um, you will have um, competitive trail field hunters and cross country will be open for walking only. You cannot bring your horse within 200 feet of any of those courses. We will remove you from competition. Um, so need to observe that again, hacking and everything is fine. Uh, there's a couple of specific option or opportunities that are open on that schooling schedule. Freestyle has dedicated prop schooling. That is your opportunity to do a run through with your props later in the evening um, at a time like one on one in the arena um, at a time that's not going to be disruptive to other people. Um, the barrel racers do have a dedicated schooling time on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon prior to the competitor meeting. Um, so that's when we're going to clear everybody out and let you guys run fast in there. 
Um, so we're trying to make sure that everybody has a decent opportunity. Um, I think it's pretty friendly. Um, you can school prior to passing your arrival exam. We want to make sure that if we get behind that we're not keeping anybody from having their schooling opportunity. But you do need to keep an eye on that queue and plan your day accordingly so that you make yourself available and you're not missing your chance to get your arrival exam. Like if they miss you, they'll come back and they'll try, but ultimately like you need to be proactive about making sure yeah. that you're available to get your exam done because you cannot compete without having your exam done. And, I, and we're gonna be in constant contact like the check-in, we're going to be in pretty constant contact with the vet, so we're going to know if there's a huge delay. So I wouldn't look at that list and say, oh, there's 20 people in front of me. I have plenty of time to school because they're going to get through 20 courses really quickly. Um, so if there's a delay, we'll probably tell you at check-in. Um, and then I don't think that we've actually, the arrival exam, we've said they're going to come find you at your stall. Um, they're going to do temperature, pulse, and respiration. They're going to look the horse over for body condition score, and they're going to look for any painful blemishes or swelling. So if you've got something that looks puffy, be prepared to have it palpated and see if the horse is reactive or not. Once you ideally pass that portion, they send you to the area by barns one through four, and that's where you're going to do the walking soundness exam. Um, once you pass that, you get two uh, blue stickers to put on your bridle number and your back number. And you need to make sure that you have those affixed to your numbers to go into competition arenas. Um, please do not stress too much about passing the exam. Um, I can tell you statistically that you have like people do well on this. It's not if you're taking good care of your horses, which I hope you are, you will pass the exam. Um, we have caught a handful of things like we've caught some heart murmurs and stuff like that. We have caught some horses that are genuinely, you know, like not feeling well and have and that's what this is designed to do it's not designed to make things unnecessarily hard for you it's just to ensure a standard of horsemanship mm -hmm. um if you are not passing some portion of that exam there are multiple steps before we take somebody out of competition so please like rest assured that like you will be looked at again by a blinded vet and have the process started all over again to make sure that like you've got multiple people reaching the same conclusion before we're removing anybody from the event. So just try not to stress and agonize over that too much. Um, competitor numbers, while we're talking about them, your horse should not be out of their stall without a competitor, without a bridle number on them. Like this is how, like if they get away from you, we can identify who they are and return them to you. So on your halters, on your bridles, number on your horse all the time. That's just a safety thing. Um, if you have a non-compete horse with you, please ask for a non-compete horse number when you check in. Um, that doesn't include tip horses. You will get your own numbers for them. Um, and then just like one quick change for people, particularly returning people. Um, the arena outside of Barn 7 that's referred to as the lunging pad is now the ASPCA um trial like marketplace trial arena so um there's it's no longer a dedicated lunging space it is a dedicated space for makeover marketplace horses if you need to lunge your horse there is an arena that's essentially in the parking lot um outside of like barns 20 something over there by deeper you can lunge your horse there so that's a kind of change in the arena availability okay. uh, question break sure um last year they did not ask for mine this is referring to schooling tickets should i keep them on me this year yes keep your schooling tickets on you they should be asking for them and collecting them um and that is just in the competition venues yes this doesn't apply to every single no. arena it's just this is this venues. is rolex murphy claiborne stonely covered covered um are there any specific rings for lunging slash groundwork yes um just cover that one can you go in the water at the competitive competitive trail course yeah, area? For no, no, there is no riding on the competitive trail course. There's no schooling on it. You can walk on foot uh, without your horse. You can walk the course, but you cannot school the course. Yeah, it, this is not the time to train your horse 
Um, if you need to get your horse through water, there's Masterson Station Park that's 10 minutes away from the horse park and you can go trailer your horse over there. Um, but these schooling opportunities are not designed to be opportunities to resolve or teach your horse something. This is to get them in and get them acclimated so that they have a good time. Um, and we do have stewards roving the grounds. And if they feel that you are over schooling your horse, they are absolutely going to tell you to give your horse a break. Leslie, cool your jets, girl. <laughs> Um, if your Leslie has four questions, um, if your horse's name is their barn name on their vaccination receipt, it would be helpful if you got that changed. Yeah, or just have your have a note or something. Have your vet write a note on it and sign off on it. You have two vaccination files, but it won't let let you upload one. How do I resolve that? Email it to Raina. It should, and your vac if your vaccination file should be one file. It shouldn't be two separate files. Um, there, we really only need proof of vaccination in one form. So pick whichever form is best and upload that one. Is If you make the makeover or in the finale, is there a schooling opportunity? Yes, there is arena familiarization for finale horses on Friday afternoon, and it's not in the all tech. We don't use the all tech. That should not be confused with the covered arena. Mm -hmm. The covered arena is where the hub of activity is for us where our vendor fair is and where all like indoor competition and the finale takes place, not in all tech. Um, we will have Farrier and Vet on site um, throughout the week. So Jeremiah Zimmer it will be the Vet or the Farrier. His phone number is listed here. Um, it's also listed on the venue map that is in your packet. Also, the um, emergency number for Hadyard is on uh, the phone number or is on the map. Um, but Hadyard will also have like emergency vet coverage on site. Uh, throughout the week as well. So um, that phone number for Haggard is like, if it's after hours or you have an emergency, it's also the number if you need to schedule a pre-purchased -pre exam, we'll call that number as well. Um, horse park policies in Deaver. Um, so Deaver is the vendor for golf cart rental, um, round pen rental. Like we, I say this every year, it's not a paddock, it is a round pen. So let's just be clear about that. If you're very concerned about turnout, you should probably look at like finding a layover facility where you can stay overnight and just ship in for the day or something like that. Like this, these round pens are not gonna, they might be a lifesaver for you, I don't know. But um, the um, Diva also will do um, like hay the bedding delivered to your stall. It's gonna be at a premium. Um, there is a tractor supply company uh, 10 minutes up the road in Georgetown if you need anything. Yeah. But that, I mean, we don't, we Your are not the ones to contact yeah. about golf carts, hay, grain, stall mats, shavings, any of that, contact Deaver or get it from tractor supply or somebody else. We don't do that. Yeah. So um, your stalls are 10 by 10 on concrete. Um, there are all types of different ways that you can solve for that. Most people just bed deep, but you can play around with putting down straw. I've seen people put down like old carpets or like there's all kinds of ways that you can solve for that. Um, you need to make sure that you have like all the hardware and things that you need to hang your buckets and hay nets and things like that. Um, muck tubs, you need to bring that. Hoses, you need to bring that. There's spigots, cold water only. Um, and then anything electric, uh, you need no things that make heat. And anything that you plug in needs to be with a grounded three-prong three plug. Um, so no two-prong plugs and no daisy chaining um, extension cords and um, not extension cords, uh, power strips together. So these are fire marshal things and I just, I don't, don't be that person. Um, we get a lot of questions about uh, like, mini bikes and ATVs and stuff like that. Um, the horse park has really kind of relaxed those rules and they the biggest things are just that the driver is over 16 and they um, are observing the speed limit. So you can bring in your own um, electric bikes, segways, scooters, 
whatever, there's not really any limitation on that anymore. You just need to observe the speed limit and be of age. Um, all right, question break. Uh, Cindy says, what's the name? Deaver, yes. Uh, D is in dog, E is in Eric, D E R, Deaver. Um, their, the email that went out last week has the link to their website as well. It's under horse park policy slash Deaver. That's in last week's newsletter. Was there an updated schedule sent out last week? Yes, there is an updated schedule posted to the website. Mm -hmm. There's a provisional schedule on the website. There's a schooling schedule in the portal. Um, and ride times, install assignments go out tomorrow. Uh, yep. Yeah. Grace wants to know if you're able to camp in your trailer. Um, I believe that if you want a trailer space with a hookup in the campground, I believe that stuff is sold out, but you might check with people scratching. Um, otherwise, it's technically against the horse park policy. So it's primitive, right? That's what, like, there is primitive camping, but isn't that one first come, first serve? Hookups, hookup isn't, but regular old. You are not supposed to camp in your trailer in trailer parking. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I've said that it is forever away. And if you do it, I just, I don't want to hear about it. So um, that's not my answer. Um, yeah, you can plug in your phones. That's fine. Like the three prong, the three prong plug deal is really, um, really it spans and like larger appliances and stuff like that you know some people will bring like mini fridges and things like that but i don't want coffee pots i don't want crock pots in your tax stalls um and your fans definitely have to be three prong grounded but something tiny like a cell phone charger is not going to be a problem um yeah camping is first come first serve um Okay, so we have a, so Jill was replying to Jennifer's question about schooling the competitive trail course, and she said um, she, last year she schooled on a field with jumps that was a little ways from the competitive trail that had water and nobody was there, and Liz said, can we hack out on the field hunter field before the jumps are set? I believe this is the field that Jill is referring to when she is saying she schooled on it last year. Um, no, you really shouldn't be out there. The sunken road field that's like adjacent across Nina Bonnie Way is where the field hunter course is. So you really shouldn't be back there. So Jill, you're not in field hunters, so I'll forgive you, but um, there's not a schooling opportunity for field hunters out there. And like the permanent jumps that are at the horse park are really not like, I mean, the permanent jumps that are at the horse park are Land Rover jumps, so I hope none of you guys are on them anyway. But um, <laughs> let's see. Um, I have over the social schedule a little bit, but just a reminder again you, like, there is a dinner, there is an awards dinner Friday night, and if you want to come, there is a ticket and you need to buy it by October yeah, 3rd. Just, just buy it now. Yeah. Buy your tickets now. It includes food, it includes a drink, yep. not included in your entry. Okay, um, scoring and special awards, uh, the drug testing, there's drug testing. Um, we drug test every finale uh, discipline winner, so they'll pull you as you come out of champion voting at the end of the finale, but there's also random testing in force, so make sure that you're familiar with things. Um, if there is a copy of the drug form, I believe, um, in the competitor portal, so if you have something that you need to declare ahead of time, that would make sure that you turn that in at check-in. And that has to be on USCF's, like, list of you can declare it on a form there's some substances that are totally restricted restricted like completely so make sure you're prohibited prohibited yeah make sure you're looking at that and uh, in line with those rules okay um scoring and special awards so Scoring is live in that it is on our website. And as we process scorecards back in the scoring office, the results will go up on the website. Um, the results are time stamped with like when their last update was and whether or not the scoring is still in progress for the day or if it's done for the day. 
And the reason why that's re relevant is that we have a 12 hour protest period. So once the scoring is complete for the day or complete for the division, you have 12 hours um, to register a protest if you don't agree with the score that you were given for whatever reason. So I think just to like language around protests, a protest is when you think that the math is wrong on your scorecard, that you do not agree with the score that you were given, or that if there was some other kind of official ruling that you don't agree with. So like if you didn't pass the arrival exam or the jog or something like that, these are protests. Um, protests that involve double checking our math are free. Protests where you want to have your scorecard or a decision reviewed come with a hundred dollar fee. That fee will be refunded if we rule in your favor, but we need to make sure that people are like, we're using our time well because we do have a timeline where we need to move on with the event. So that is why there is a protest period. And those forms are available in the portal. Yes. They're no longer like an in-person thing. You have to log into the portal and submit yeah. your protest. So this goes for, and we also didn't cover complaints in this email. And so the difference between a protest and a complaint is a complaint is something where you have somebody that you feel is violating the rules of competition. Um, their horsemanship, conduct, eligibility, that sort of thing, that's gonna go through the contact us form on our website. And the reason why we're doing this is because we have, we wanna make sure that people have a very clear protocol for bringing that stuff to our attention so that we can handle it in a timely manner. Um, in the past, we've had problems with like, well, I told so-and-so in passing or whatever, and they said they'd take care of it. And they're, you know, this is just a means of documentation to make sure um, that we are handling things um, efficiently and timely. Um, and, and we take those things seriously. Like if you see someone doing something against the rules or just something that you know, they're not treating their horse well, whatever it is, like, don't be afraid to report that to us. Um, it's very know. frustrating for us when, like, you know, there will be a thread going on social media or something like that, and they'll, you know, people will get catty or something, and they'll say, like, I saw such and such happening at the event, and I told somebody, and nobody did anything about it, and it'll be, like, we'll be sitting here, like, what are they talking We've about? We've never heard of. <laughs> yeah. So we want to make sure that we're reducing the likelihood of some of things like that coming up. And some of that, like, there's a, like a responsibility and accountability for you as a participant to report things that you see happening so that we can do something about it. We can't, we can't be everywhere at once and we can't do anything about things that we don't know about. So use the contact us form. I believe we are now calling it trainer violation. I think yeah. that's the selection on the contact us form. It's pretty obvious. Just go to the contact us form and if you see something and hopefully you won't, hopefully there's nothing like that going on, but things happen. So if you do see it, fill out that form so we can do our due diligence there. Um, it is a 12 hour protest period, but the copy, your scorecards will be available for you to pick up at the info desk once we post things final at the end of the day. And that is like, we leave, once we put them out, like we have taken scanned copies and we leave them out for people to help like serve themselves at any time, day or night. So just understand that that's how we handle that. Um, so assuming that we get through everything, we don't have any like big scoring problems, we move on to the finale and the awards dinner. So um, the change for this year is that we're doing ribbons um, and special awards based on um, preliminary competition results. So that means like top 10 in your discipline after Monday or after uh, Wednesday and Thursday competition, we're going to be awarding one through 10. We're going to be doing all the top junior amateur team. Um, we also ribbon uh, top junior amateur and team all the way down to 10th as well as overall. Um, so, and we will be doing presentations for the top place junior amateur team and top 10 overall in each division, as well as special award winners at that dinner. Um, so we will be contacting you if you are in a group that is going to be um, ideally presented with an award. 
um, during this dinner to see if you're going to be there or not, um, just to try to make sure that like our sponsors can get pictures with the winners and all, all that sort of thing. Um, if you are coming to that awards dinner, we please ask that you just come in tidy casual attire, like shorts and flip flops that leave them at home, please. Um, it is casual, but just, you know, we don't need to wear a ball gown, but yeah, put some clothes on. Yeah. Um, so, and then what happens is that the top five in each division uh, move on to the finale. There will be a finale briefing on Friday morning. Um, we will not tell, contact you to tell you to be there. You just need to know to be there. Um, so there will be a finale briefing on Friday morning. There will be finale jogs midday on Friday, and then there will be arena familiarization on Friday afternoon. So if you're headed in the finale Friday, it's gonna be a busy day for you. Because uh, you're also, obviously, if you're headed to the finale, you're going to be getting awards at the awards dinner, too. So hopefully you'll stay and do all that stuff. Um, so there's details about all of that here. Um, special awards, if your horse was eligible, they were auto-nominated, so you didn't have to take any action on that. We have verified the eligibility on those, and there is a tracker for them in the um, results page on that will be on the website and those will also be given out based on results from preliminary competition mm -hmm. at that awards dinner. Um, if you will not be staying through you can come and pick up your ribbon prior to the start of the party we will have all that stuff down um, in the big barn so if you're headed home um, and are not staying for the party you can um, come and pick that up. Uh, otherwise, we will ship them to you. What we will do afterwards is we will let people know if we have any ribbons that are available for them. And if you would like us to ship them to you, you just need to let us know and we'll give you a deadline just so that we're not mm -hmm. prolonging that process. Um, prize money gets paid out by mail after the event and after the drug tests all come back. Um, if we need you to do a W-9 or anything like that, we will contact you to get that from you. I'm not dealing with paper W-9s at the event anymore because I'm tired of it. Um, uh, see. So if you are in the finale and tip on Friday, how will scheduling work? We have everyone who is cross-entered uh, identified and should that come up, um, we will absolutely be doing our best to work with TIP to work that out for you. But that is something like we can't tell you exactly how that's going to work right now because we don't know where the crossover is going to be. But we do have you guys identified and uh, we will be working with TIP to try to make it work with your schedule. Um, we'll also have the option um, in the finale as we finish each discipline, we will parade the top 10 overall and the first place junior amateur and team. So if you're staying through, like you are also invited to parade your horse in that awards presentation during the finale on the live stream. Um, and just make sure, again, kind of note on turnout, um, you don't have to be, you know, dressed like for Land Rover jogs, but um, yeah. I, I don't want to see people tire. coming through the awards ceremony bareback in flip-flops and shorts. And actually, that's a rule um, for what it's worth. Like, there is no riding in shorts at this event. <laughs> so, if anybody's caught that. Um, okay. Uh, the rest of it is um, not applicable to all and just a couple of things. Scratches and catch riders are... Do you want to do a question break? Sure. Yes, Leslie, there is a stall, there is a plug per stall. Um, the dinner is Friday at the big barn. On the horse park, on, on the horse park grounds. Yeah. At, sorry, at 7 p.m.? No, uh, like 5.30 or something, the doors open. All the information is on the Eventbrite ticketing page that is on our website and linked to this email and posted multiple times in the training group. Um, if your horse is eligible for special awards, it is listed on the entry tab under the horse's name. Yes, actually, yeah, we did. Um, it is not everything is uploaded yet. So if you're like, my horse should be listed as in the running for this special award, but it's not on their profile, um, please have some patience. There's some awards that we're still waiting on verification from uh, third parties about, uh, but you are also welcome to email me or Sally uh, and just say, hey, I just want to make sure that this is, you know, noticed that my horse is eligible whether or not it's on their profile yet but yes 
if your horse is eligible for a special award, it is on their entry profile on the entry list. Nothing on Facebook. Um, other like little things. Um, we have thank you cards. Uh, we are an organization that values gratitude, and we have thank you cards that are in the info desk at in the covered arena. And that is an opportunity. We'll have a list of sponsors, but also fellow competitors, staff. Um, if you have somebody that you would like to acknowledge for making your weekend or your year like a really good experience, we really encourage you to do an exercise in gratitude and drop a note card or so or two um, in the jar in the info desk, and we'll make sure that those get to the people that they're intended for. Um, we also have a People's Choice Vendor of the Show, so that is um, also a vote that you can cast in the info desk. Um, vendor fair, silent auction, all of that stuff will be running uh, throughout the week in the covered arena. Um, you did get a separate email with all of the kind of extra social activities, extra educational activities. Some of those do require some registration, um, but uh, that's again all on the Eventbrite page in the email that you guys uh, received probably a, a little bit over a week ago now. Um, the official show photographer is Canner Clips, um, and they will be on site throughout the week covering our show as well as TIP. Uh, they will have a booth in the covered arena, and they are pretty quick about getting stuff turned around on their website. Um, volunteers, we always need them, um, and you can walk up and sign up. Uh, like based on when you're available or once ride times come out, you can always sign up for a shift ahead of time. But um, please do stop by the info or the volunteer desk in the covered arena if you have some time to give. Um, we do have some pretty cool incentives for people that work, um, you know, one full volunteer shift. Um, and that gives you a discount in the RRP store. It gets you eligible for, we have nine Yeti coolers to raffle off uh, for our volunteers and you get tickets per shift. So. Uh, the more you work, the better your chances. Um, do you want to do scratches and hip drives? Yep. Scratches. So, I mean, if you are thinking of withdrawing entirely at this point, um, please do it now rather than later. Uh, you are eligible for partial refunds up until next Friday, October 6th. Is that next Friday? Yes. That's next Thursday. I don't know what day it is. Um, something like that. But do it before we leave. October sixth. <laughs> October sixth. And the way that's gonna work, don't email me and say, "Hey, withdraw me, please. I want a refund." I need you to go and take the initiative. Go into the portal. Um, scroll down to my entries. Go to your horse. Use the drop down menu. Hit update status and complete that withdrawal form. Whether it's because you're withdrawing because the horse isn't ready, because you've sold the horse and you need to report the sale, it's gonna ask you to pick those options. Do that first and then send me an email and say, hey, I withdrew this horse or I withdrew my entry entirely. Can I please have my partial refund? Um, and that refund is a, a refund on your final entry fees only minus $50 per horse. Uh, so you'll email secretary at tvmakeover.org once you've completed your withdrawal. After October 6th, uh, we are not offering partial refunds. And you do have to email me to request that refund. It's not something that we do automatically. Um, as for scratches, whether you're scratching a singular discipline um, or both, and it's something that's going to happen on site, something that you don't know yet, um, there will be a scratch form available in the portal. And that is pretty much going to be the only way that you can scratch from your uh, discipline. So you can scratch one horse from one discipline. You can scratch one horse from two. It's it's pretty simple, uh, but basically starting on Monday, October 10th is when the scratch form is going to be available uh, right there in the competitor portal. Um, and you need to do that, I believe it's within an hour of your scheduled ride time. If you do not provide sufficient notification, you will be assessed a $100 no-show fee uh, that we will collect before you apply for the next makeover. Um, and what we're also asking that you do if you're on the grounds and you're scratching, we ask that you go and walk over uh, to the attendant at your ring and just let them know that you've scratched as well, even once you've done it through the portal. 
Uh, so definitely make sure if you're scratching a discipline, if your horse is just not feeling it that day, if you're not feeling it that day, whatever the reason is, log into the portal and fill out that scratch form. Uh, another thing that we offer is catch riders, uh, but there are very specific instructions for catch riding. Um, if you are a professional and you need a catch rider, you need to have, no matter what, if you're using a catch rider, they have to be an already accepted makeover trainer at this point. There's no longer like, hey, my coach is coming with me. Can they catch ride for me? Like, you know, we're both professionals, whatever it is. If they're not an accepted 2022 makeover trainer, they cannot be your catch ride. Uh, and then leading into that, whoever's catch riding for you has to be of the same trainer status as you. So that's professional to professional, amateur to amateur, junior to junior. Uh, they cannot already be involved with more than two makeover horses. Um, and there is a catch rider form in the portal as well. Same thing. Uh, once you fill out that catch rider form, that catch rider is the one that has to present the horse from that point forward. So there's no flip flopping. If you decide that you want them to catch ride the horse in competitive trail, but you have dressage on Thursday, they're going to have to ride for you in dressage as well. Uh, so the same thing if your horse makes it to the finale. Um, and for teams, we you can still have catch riders for teams, but same thing. If it's a team member that's a professional, the person catch riding for that team member has to be a professional and vice versa. Um, more information about that is in the rule book. Um, but just like there's a form for scratches, there's a form for catch riding. And you will have to do that uh, no less than three hours prior to your ride time. Um. And then just quick touching on the ASPCA marketplace for those of you that have your horses entered, um, your horses are identified in a number of different ways as being for sale as including on your bridal number, your stall cards, that sort of thing. Um, you do have the dedicated trial arena. That's the um, arena that gets called the lunging pad um, outside of barn seven. It's very clearly marked as the trial arena. Um, if you have somebody that wants to try your horse, that is 100% up to you to schedule based on when you're comfortable on doing it throughout the week. If you want to wait until after the horse is done competing, that sort of thing, that's entirely up to you. Um, you do need to make sure that people come up to the info desk in the covered arena and fill out a waiver with us, um, and they will be given a wristband that indicates that they have done that. So you need to be looking for a wristband from people before you let them on your horse. And you may also want to consider if you yourself have a waiver that protects you um, and, your, and, or, and or your business, you might want to consider having copies of those for them to sign as well. Um, if you are successful in making a sale um, or adoption next week, um, we do have a photo op area up by uh, the ASPCA adoption barn and barn five. So we invite you to go over there, um, take a picture, please report your sale to us. Um, and uh, we have copies of a boilerplate um, bill of sale on our website as well, if you do need um, something. Uh, to send a horse home with. And uh, like I mentioned before, uh, we do have vets on call at Haggard across the street that are prepared to do uh, pre-purchase exams uh, on the fly for you. So that's all set up as well. Um, so that gets to the end of this email. Uh, there Again, ride times install assignments tomorrow, and there will be additional information like discipline by discipline we're going to aim to get that out at the same time as right times, but yeah. um, we'll be and, going over that stuff in the competitor briefing as well. Yeah. And um, with that, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but don't expect ride times at like 8 a.m. tomorrow. Expect them more around 5 p.m. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't want to get a whole bunch of emails or see a whole bunch of posts in the trainers group. I hold, I heard ride times were coming out today. I heard stall assignments were coming out today. Where are they? Have, been, have they been posted? I promise you will know when they are out. Um, they will be on the website. We will send out an email. We'll make a post in the trainers group. We will let you guys know that that is out. Yeah. Um, so like there've been a few points of, like throughout this call that we've probably sounded fairly stern or maybe agitated. Um, we put all of this information together, not to bog you down and make things needlessly complicated. Like these emails are the result of like, this is what our seventh or eighth time doing this. Like 
knowing what questions come up for people and the information that people need to know to have a good time. So this is us trying to be proactive. Like this is a unique event and it's not just an event, it's a 10 month long process that is culminating in this. So this is not just a horse show. This is, uh, remind you guys again, this is an event that is the culmination of a charitable project mm -hmm. <laughs> that serves the mission of our organization. So that's why there are so many other moving parts to this. Mm -hmm. And our staff might seem big, but we are not. And there are, the ratio of like you to us and other people that we also have to satisfy is not in our favor. Um, so, Every question that we have to answer repeatedly that's been answered already and provided to you like and anticipated um, slows us down from doing things that you desperately want to know about like ride times and stall assignments. So um, please just give us some grace, give us some patience, please turn to the resources, the many, many resources that are available to you because um, we have put them together with you in mind wanting to give you all the tools that you need to have a good time yeah because sincerely we do want you to have a good we time. do <laughs> um i think most people that have been to this event will attest that we run a really good horse show it's a good experience it's a world-class experience but it's also very down to earth and friendly yeah. as well so right. it's probably pretty intimidating if you haven't been before like looking at all of this information and all the parts but i promise like we have engineered things to get this done like efficiently and enjoyably and um you know yeah work with and us this it, isn't like we're might, not solely responsible no. for your experience it's a two-way street mm -hmm. and so this is your part of the two-way street is keeping yourself informed and being proactive about the things that you need to be taken care of like microchipping your horse and getting your food vaccinations yep uh fast round question yes if I am a part of a team, um, I'm not the captain, but my horse's info or entries aren't showing up in my trainer portal, am I good to go? Or if it's showing up in the captain's portal. So if you are a team member, you will not see any of the horse's stuff. All of that is in the team captain's portal because the team captain is, is responsible for pretty much all of the paperwork for the team. Once you have gone in and submitted your application as a team member, that's pretty much all you have to do. Your team captain is responsible for everything after that. So you're good to go. Um, over on Zoom, Jordan wants to know, how do you scratch a discipline today? Uh, if you wanted to do it today, then you would email me, secretary at tvmakeover.org, and I would uh, be happy to scratch you from a discipline. If That's you want just to do that. A singular discipline, not yeah. withdrawing your horse entirely. Yeah, if you're withdrawing your horse entirely, you're going to use... The withdrawal form in the trainer portal but if you're entered in dressage and show jumping and you want to uh, scratch from dressage you can send me an email and i can make that happen for you uh, we are no longer doing the dressage scratch incentive um that has passed its point i'm like ride times are pretty much done at this point so and we're down to a, a reasonable yeah, yeah um dressage is good to go so if you're thinking of scratching for a, like for example from dressage for that purpose we're not offering that $75 refund anymore. Um, that's all set. So, but yeah, if you need to scratch from one discipline, just email me and I can work that out for you. Anything else? Last call. And this will be recorded. Mm -hmm. So it will be available whether or not you're on Facebook. We always post them to the trainer portal as well, our YouTube account, and then put them in the trainer, por trainer portal. So um, even if you're one of those lucky people that doesn't use Facebook, you will still have access to this. If you do. All right. So, microchips, flu vaccination. Mm -hmm. You can't be there before noon. Buy your tickets. Email or call Raina. Mm -hmm. Probably email. Preferably email. Um, but if it's after next weekend, Go ahead and give me a call. There is a number that is different from the office number. It is in here. If I don't answer, please leave a voicemail because um, I will not know who you are and I will not call you back if I don't have a voicemail from you. So uh, use the Facebook group socially. Yeah. If you need, if you have questions or need help with anything, inbox. Yes. 
please do not use the trainers group, especially once we have left the office next weekend to ask about event information, rules, scratches, anything. We don't want you guys getting incorrect information from a trainer when we're not there to be able to police it or correct it. That is really not the place for those questions. And I am happy to help you, but you have to direct them to me using my email or my phone number. And be patient. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. She will get to you. Mm -hmm. Sending multiple emails will slow me down. Um, so please try to send just one and give me a while, but I promise I will get back to you. All right. Logging off. We'll be in touch. Otherwise, we'll see you very soon. Yeah. Good night.